Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Study. We're in, that's element four, and we're in sub-element five delta. And this just happens to be part 23 of this entire test. So up to this point, you've learned enough to answer 23 questions. Well, at the end of this, you will. Let's go ahead and get started. Most of these are going to be memorization. There's really not a lot you can do about it. What is the result of conductor skin effect? We're talking about skin. Resistance increases as frequency increases because RF current flows closer to the surface of the conductor. So at DC, my arm is an entire conductor. But as you increase the frequency and you get into those RF frequencies, then it just wants to flow across the skin itself. Imagine how thin of a layer that is on this inductor or uh, conductor. So resistance increases as frequency increases. Why? Because RF flows closer to the surface. That's why when you do your RF grounding for your station, flat copper strips are better than using wires because then you have this, the more surface area for that skin. Why is it important to keep lead length short for components used in circuits for VHF and above? That is to minimize inductive reactance. So if you have leads, you're going to have an inductor that's going to be there. It's, it's a small inductor, but you want to minimize that inductive reactance. Question number three, what is the phase relationship between current and voltage for reactive power? They are 90 degrees out of phase. This comes back to Eli the Iceman. Eli is for inductance, Iceman is for capacitance, and for Eli, the voltage leads the current in an inductor. For the Iceman, current leads voltage in capacitance. And they are, if they're purely reactive power, then they're 90 degrees out of phase. We saw in the previous section, if you have any resistance in there, then it becomes an angle, and it's not completely 90 degrees out of phase. It's some angle that's out of phase. Why are short connections used at microwave frequencies? And that is to reduce phase shift along the connection. Well, if current is going to lead voltage or voltage is going to lead current that's a phase shift you want them to be in phase so short connections short leads is the way to do it that's to reduce phase shift along the connection what parasitic characteristic causes electrolytic capacitors to be unsuitable for use at rf capacitors can have inductance and inside of them, you know, you've, you've got some conductors that are separated by some form of insulator. Well, you can have inductance that can form inside of those. So that is the answer. Parasitic char characteristic of electrolytic capacitors is inductance. And you can look that up on a data sheet. They usually give you some form of inductance uh, at a frequency. What parasitic characteristic creates an inductor self-resonance? Now, this is a bad thing here. An inductor is sometimes just a coil of wire. So if you use magnet wire, it has an enameled outside. Well, that is the insulation. And then if you have an air core inductor, there's also air as an insulation, depending on how far you have your windings across. So that is a capacitor. You have two conductors separated by an insulator. You have interturn capacitance. So that is also parasitic. An inductor self-resonance is it, it can be a bad thing because then if you have inductance and reactance together. You're talking about some kind of filter. It's going to have an impedance. What combines to create the self-resonance of a component? And that is the component's nominal and parasitic reactance.
These are things you just have to memorize. So there's there in components have some kind of nominal and parasitic reactants, whether it's inductive reactants or capacitive reactants. What is the primary cause of loss in film capacitors at RF? Well, we're going back to that skin effect at RF, that skin flowing across just a small part that is causing a loss of something inside of that uh, that capacitor. Question number nine, what happens to reactive power in ideal, that's the perfect world, inductors and capacitors? That energy is stored in magnetic or electric fields, magnetic for inductor, electric for capacitor, but power is not dissipated. Now that's a perfect world. So in a non-perfect world that we live in, you're going to get power dissipated in those because a, there's no such thing as a perfect inductor unless you take it to absolute zero, zero Kelvin. Okay, so getting back to the question itself, reactive power in those ideal inductors and capacitors, energy is stored in the magnetic or electric fields, but no power is dissipated. Remember that because we're going to need it again in a minute. As a conductor's diameter increases, what is the effect on its electrical length? Its electrical length increases. Just remember that. I don't have a drawing for it, but it increases. So the electrical length increases. Now, I did go look up electrical length. Electrical length is a unitless comparison between the physical length and the wave the physical length of your conductor and the wavelength of whatever frequency is going through it so that is the electrical length and there's a whole bunch of other stuff that goes along with that that's not really that important right now as the in diameter increases the electrical length also increases Okay, so we, we're down to the last two questions, and I have a, a drawing for this that we're going to bring up. So the first question says, for question 11, how much real power, see that, you got, you got to look at that real power, is consumed in a circuit consisting of a 100 ohm resistor in series with a 100 ohm inductive reactance, drawing one ampere. Now, we know that reactive power is wattless, non-productive power. We just learned that. If we go back just a minute to the question before that, energy is stored, but no power is dissipated. We're talking about perfect, perfect world conditions. So, what's the answer? If you know that power equals current times voltage, do they give us voltage up here? Nope, they sure don't. So we have to find out what voltage is. Voltage is E equals current times resistance, E equals I times R, and you substitute that into your power formula to get P equals I times E, which is I times R. So power is I squared times R, which is current squared times resistance, the current is 1 ampere, the resistance is 100 ohms, and that gives you 100 watts. Now, why did I ignore the highlighted part? Because reactive power is wattless, non-productive power. So, that is why it is what it is. And, of course, now we have the answer to number 12. What is reactive power? It is wattless non-productive power and that actually is two of your answers for this section wattless non-productive power and the question that we saw before that was was I already there stored in a magnetic or electric field but power is not dissipated okay so hopefully now that we're done with this section you have 23 answers
that you can make on your extra exam. Remember, extra exams, 50 questions. There's going to be 50 of these videos. It's a lot of work. Like this video. I hope it has been helpful. Please subscribe to the channel to so show, show your support for this uh, creation, creation of content. What you see probably took a lot longer than it took to actually record. So, hey, I'm Robbie W1RCP. I look forward to seeing you on the next video.